kind of my objective just kind of right off the bat is to understand or to kind of like show everybody kind of the role of the staffer in terms of a legislative office, specifically in a, a field office, and how to build and maintain relationships with kind of these individuals, the policymaking staff, what to avoid, and some personal insight into myself. And my kind of personal motivation is that I really just wanted to help the community that helped me. Um, I know that everything that a lot of you are kind of advocating for and so on has been fundamental in my life and kind of really just helping me through some very particularly intense times in life. And so as a result, and as you will, as you will eventually see kind of through the, the slideshow, um, but I just really wanted to kind of get back. And of course, here's me at a whopping uh, 17 years old in the military here. <laughs> I laugh, but I probably don't look overwhelmingly different other than the fact that I have hair and uh, facial hair now. <laughs> so otherwise, oops, there we go, background. So first, currently, I am a teacher and a host. So let me go ahead and see, in a perfect world, be able to click on this. Ah, here we go. So I'm a teacher and a host. So I'm a teacher in Seattle right now. Uh, I just finished my master's studying political science and focusing on security policy. I'm kind of just back right now teaching. This is going into my fifth year of teaching. Um, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. But the kind of the idea for me was to eventually get into policy myself. So a lot of the things that I'm speaking about are also the things that I am doing myself in real time and testing it simultaneously. And so right now I'm also a TV host. So Comcast has a bunch of local channels throughout Oregon. There's approximately seven. So I'll have a local show uh, over there. It's called the Zach Moss Show because I am not overwhelmed in all my ideas. <laughs> I just the context in terms of an actual show and a viewing. So that it's about 400,000 views episode, which I think is kind of relevant because the kind of the, the FCC and so on, or I believe it's the FCC, they're very, we kind of kind of scroll through here. So here's some Twitter analytics and so on. So a lot of the things that I'm, I'm talking about are things that I've kind of learned in the things that I've, I've tried to use in order to kind of influence policymakers from not only a media standpoint, but from an outreach standpoint as well. So I'm going to kind of go through some of these things. So as we can see, a lot of the the folks, which I'll get into in a second, is I was also a, a media consultant. Let me see if I am savvy enough. Here we go. And so, whoop. There you go. So I went to a school called Science of Code in Paris, France, from about 2021 to 2023. And there I was thankful enough to, I was working with uh, Zelensky himself and a few other individuals regarding security policy, some Bush and Obama advisors. And I, was, I myself was very curious about, say, for example, policy reform and what specifically an individual could do to, to reach out to the very folks who could have a hand in this. Now, at the time, we were focusing a lot on security policy, but the kind of concept and how to manipulate legislature is all one and the same. And so right before that, so 2001 to 2023, before that, from about 2017 to about 2000, well, 21, I was also a consultant. So I focused most of my time on being a teacher and a media consultant. And so kind of the idea, it was called media consultant, but it was mostly outreach if we're being honest. And so kind of the idea was specifically focused on helping candidates connect with millennial and generation Z audiences. So some of the individuals I was working with in 2020 include Andrew Yang, Marianne Williamson, et cetera. So essentially kind of grew the media platform and I received a bunch of requests from individuals that I had known previously in politics, and they're interested in having me work with them and essentially engage with kind of community activists and so on. And some other individuals I was connected with in terms of consulting was the University of Oregon. So that was an interesting project. It was mostly their psychology department that wanted to connect the research with kind of the younger audiences and have them... Uh, read some of the stuff on the website. And then another individual, congressional candidate, Doyle Canning, unfortunately, he did not win. So I cannot, uh, <laughs> I can't be too happy about that. And different reporters and personalities and so on. So this is where we get to the role of the local legislature. So from 2014 to 17, depending on the uh, government shutdown, so several times I was working and interning for Oregon's Senator Ron Wyden. And at the period of time, I kind of learned the internal workings of a field representative 
the DC representatives and so on and so forth. And that's really kind of, I think, kind of the focal point for what you are all kind of interested in. And so for Senator Wyden's office, obviously, we are not working in a vacuum. So we had also spoke with Oregon's other Senator Merkley's team, Representative Peter DeFazio, many more. So right now I am also in contact with uh, individuals from uh, Pennsylvania. It was a represent, or uh, excuse me, a Senator, uh, Senator Casey, who is dealing with different security policies, et cetera. So I'm kind of connecting and looking at the jobs and policy myself. So I was doing in terms of the day-to-day, -day, and this is what I think is ultimately really relevant, was essentially we have to have an idea about what is vital to the average constituent. And that is kind of the pinnacle of what a senator is trying to do. And so they essentially, as I'm sure a lot of you know, a lot of what they do is they, they have these field representatives that they meet and communicate with. The field representatives have interns. The interns, generally speaking, and this isn't simply at Wyden's office, but rather this is kind of like the, the overarching idea, is a lot of what they do is the field, the field representatives have interns that read all of the newspapers, read all of the emails, receive all of the calls. They create briefing packets for the day which is essentially just a little packet comprising of everything that happened. So at the time, I was also focusing on foreign policy and some of these other things. And so I would kind of understand what's going on. And through that, we started to understand how our, how our constituent needs prioritize. And I think that that's extremely important for all of you, because obviously there's a lot of competing priorities and so on and so forth. And so how exactly do individuals prioritize kind of that process? Now, here's some tips. I'm gonna kind of work, I have a, I'm seeing all of you on a camera, so I'm kind of working around here. Bear with me. So first things first is kind of legitimacy. Um, what I, I like to call a two second type legitimacy. So if, for example, somebody's speaking, uh, trying to call, make a phone call and trying to speak with a senator or representative to try to get some sort of an amendment and a bill or so on and so forth, they need some sort of a title very quickly enough to, to allow intern in the field representative to write down essentially they should listen to you, which is support. And in terms of building with well, maintaining independence. So who you are or what you or all of you do is incredibly important. If there's any period of time where you can kind of attach yourself. So for example, if you're to contact individuals who are part of a larger committee or larger group and reach out and have kind of some way to, to affiliate yourself or or be able to present a field representative with of understand like oh okay this is this person this is what they do they kind of what they're saying is also kind of supported by this larger group maybe because those are the individuals who they're ultimately a little bit more uh, nervous of um, these are kind of like the ideas of yourself in different ways, different aspects in the community. So people who will hear you for, say, for example, they determine how much they want to prioritize you for the day or for the week or for the month, they'll know very quickly kind of where, you, where they want to stack you in the hierarchy. Obviously, bottom up, bottom up. So befriend local media and befriend local representatives, of course. I think in, in a lot of situations when discussing kind of how does one get uh, a local uh, senator, congressman, woman, etc. How do we get their attention? Is it from the DC office, local office? Is it a little bit in between someone else? Uh, I can tell you that the most effective way to try to get policy enacted would actually be through the local representatives. And the reason for that is because they're focused on community building first. So we're discussing, say, for example, activists. So for example, there was a, a huge situation. I was in Eugene, Oregon, and I was working a lot with kind of the, the community building for Lane County, and what it was called Lane County, and a bunch of other counties in that area. Essentially, the idea was there was a bunch of individuals that were very concerned. Well, couple, number one, with a lot of there's a there's a salmon development center over there, and there's a lot of individuals that were very concerned about that, and they had reached out many many times to try to get this kind of, get the support behind them. Now, one of the issues that they had wholeheartedly ran into was the fact that they had right off kind of the, the gate, they were very, I, I would say kind of more abrasive and a little 
too aggressive uh, towards the field representatives to the point to where they had essentially a, a PR hurdle that they probably would not have otherwise dealt with. And essentially what the PR hurdle is, is instead of having a community development and having individuals who are very interested in understanding what are you saying, what are you interested in, what happens is that the field representatives are extremely stressed about, oh, I have to worry about this or how all these other things. And so what happens is when people come at them very directly, they're very worried about making mistakes. This is ultimately what happens. And they, a lot of times they, they want to the best of will, but they're extremely worried that they're going to miss that. And as a result, if there's somebody that comes at them very aggressively just by instance, then a lot of times they'll get written statements back to them as opposed to say, setting a meeting and, and the representative eventually agreeing, agreeing to a meeting, et cetera, and being able to actually have a real conversation because the field representative is worried about whether or not they're going to, uh, I don't know, uh, ripped apart for uh, maybe not being as educated on that topic at the moment. Now, a different, a different example was, it was in 2015, I'm sure you have all heard of the Iran deal or the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action between, at the time, President Obama and it was with the Iranian government. Now, Senator Wyden was on the Intelligence Committee and he was a very active individual in that kind of role. Now, the important issue to a lot of people in Oregon, and so what's interesting is, I, is uh, I got the experience to understand how did people in Oregon get their, their kind of their questions and their answers, how exactly does it work internally to get that addressed on a larger scale? And so I had a lot of individuals who had reached out, they called, they're willing to have a, just a a conversation they had sent information that was typically via email and they wanted to call and have a conversation about that because we already knew their stance in advance because they had actually sent us information and we could read over their stance, have a real conversation with them. And we knew that a lot of these individuals were tied to larger organizations and so on. And so a lot of times, to be honest, the representatives were more willing to kind of focus a lot of time and energy on them because they knew that they were tied to time. We knew what they were in advance. And so we knew how to prepare ourselves and not to be, say, for example, very PR and professional in the sense that we are putting up the walls. Incredibly important. And that's kind of where I go down to the conduct. So write your interests and proposals down or will be written down for you. What I mean specifically is if you call representative, 99% of the time there's an intern. They have to take notes about what you are saying. But they've also, you're also one at approximately 40 individuals. So if you don't have a written statement that you're sending in advance, and that's the key, if you really want to try to make sure your stuff is prioritized, write it yourself and have a clear, concise idea. Because a lot of times what happens is a lot of the interns and they still really and this is going to sound just don't take very good notes and they really don't want to have to reach out to you and admit sorry i should have listened more carefully i can't to remember what you were saying and so what happens is that it is deprioritized as an attempt to not deal with the situation it's ultimately what happens and that happens time and time again a lot of times that was sorry by the way there's no like outside but a lot of times that is that is a huge differentiating value between whether someone gets listened to or not is what is actually written down. And so another tip that I had was call, then email, and then state when you're going to call back. Because most of the time, they will know, oh, they're going to, this is Monday, they're going to call back on Tuesday with this exact question that they had written down. Okay, great. We will schedule that in for you. Let's hash out an idea. A lot of times what happens is that these types of things are not discussed in advance. And so it leads to, again, another deprioritization between the individuals who are, because they really don't know if you're going to, if you're trying to get into the void, if you want a response, what kind of response, and when are we expecting to see you? But if we know that, we know how to prioritize that, and that is absolutely everything. Next, when you're sending, say, for example, an email, I would give a short and a long version of what specifically you wanted, so short version in the front, of course, the detailed version in the back, so they can read it very quickly and then answer. Again, I don't know if you guys can hear the crows behind me. Sorry about that in advance. Um, and the last, obviously, is the less defensive walls, the better. So you can, if, if you can have an interpersonal conversation with individuals and let them know, hey, 
I, I really want this to happen. It is okay to try to be educated in real time about the situation. This is not going to be spread. Whatever you're saying, whatever you make a mistake on, this is between us. That is it. And that, that makes a massive difference on who, who you're going to be forwarded to speak with higher up the ladder after you need presented it. Recommendations to avoid. Use the tactic of public the shaming policy last resort. This is to avoid PR statements. Uh, so this is, this is obviously an event that there is something specifically that you wanted to advocate for. Uh, a lot of times this would be uh, a last ditch effort. So try in any way, shape or form to avoid going to the media before going to the representative if you already have a relationship with that individual. This will ensure that they, they are able to be more honest and frank, obviously. Uh, field representatives, they, they want, uh, this is, I think, one of the most important points that nobody knows about. Field representatives are competing with each other. Nobody says that, and it is very well known. I've, I, over all of the different congressional and senatorial individuals and campaigns, this is exactly it, because a lot of times, these individuals are trying to move up the ladder, and they have to compete amongst each other. And what determines whether Joe or somebody else goes ahead and gets a, a promotion is quite literally the extent to which they have networks. And that is the way that they can understand what's going on, on the ground level. And so representatives want to they want to be close and interpersonal with you. So it's just a matter of making sure that you're able to let them know that it is to have real conversations. And by eventually they will trust absolute answers. And because they know that they can trust you, you will be moved up in the ladder of hierarchy. And they will actually, a lot of times they will say, oh, this issue had popped up. This is what we should prioritize. Um, this individual who cares about it had said their two cents. Senator, in this case, Wyden or others, want to know what is a general idea of constituents? What exactly are they thinking? A lot of times exactly what you will be copied and pasted to an email sent to him about what is a recommendation to do. And so, at the end of the day, it's really just about the field representative in terms of going to actually create action. A lot of the, the individuals that are working in DC are focused on larger issues, but they're not willing to be real and frank with you unless they know that you are a part of essentially the circle or the network or the group. That is, a, that is the only time I've ever seen it play out well. Um, and so the last thing I will say is people always want to know how, how do individuals know in that moment if, if a thousand people are calling, how is something prioritized? Aside from exactly who you're speaking with and that relationship with the field representative, a lot of what also is going in is individuals who are essentially uh, inputting data into a computer system that shows the hierarchy, how many times has something been called about? What was the stance on it, yes or no? Oh, the Iran deal is, is the most important thing that is happening right now. Stance. Oh, for the Iran deal, great. Oh, Joe just sent a email giving me a rundown of what he wants to happen. Great, let's, let's add that to the debrief packet and clip what they want, that, they, what they want to have happen uh, as a part of essentially the entire scheme. And that's kind of used as a case study to data is representing. Um, and so if I would love for everybody to have a thousand questions, I hope that makes sense as I'm trying to kind of swim through the networking that generally happens. But what I will say is thank you very much for hearing what I have to say. And I very much look forward to anything that you have to ask.